Peace and blessings and welcome back to the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. This episode is brought to you by HeritageHipHop.com where we bring you your future favorite artists today and we're more than music. So join Heritage Hip Hop's family by becoming a member of the website and getting exclusive podcasts, interviews, and music. Meet your new favorite artists of tomorrow and celebrate the artists of today by coming to Heritage Hip Hop and spending some time with them on our classic interviews. You'll never forget what you hear and you'll be more of a fan of those who you love. We're also sponsored by Transparent Credit Repair, the superheroes of the financial literacy and credit repair world. It only takes 15 seconds to change your financial future and your life. Open your wallet to more income instead of paying out more debt by going to HeritageHipHop.com and clicking on the link for Transparent Credit Repair. Fill out the application. 20% off of all services are given to you by going through HeritageHipHop.com. So remember, change your financial future in 15 seconds. Just go to HeritageHipHop.com, click on the link for Transparent Credit Repair, and change your life. On this episode of the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast, we're going into the past to talk to one of the members of one of the greatest groups hip hop has ever given us. We're talking to C-Knowledge. AKA Doodlebug of Diggable Planets. And we're going to talk about not only his hip hop history, but his new album, The Caledelphian. And this episode was done on the road. So you may hear some things in the background that sounds very interesting. But I wanted to give my brother this time to shine because he deserves it. And check out his album, The Caledelphian. I'm, I'm sure you're going to love it even more so after you hear this interview. So stay tuned to greatness as we bring you another classic and I'll come back with my commentary after this interview. Peace and blessings and welcome back to the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. We are on a roll right now and I'm talking to a hip hop veteran who not only has changed the game with his style, he introduced style to the game as well. Please introduce yourself. What's up, brother? My name is C-Knowledge, a.k.a. Doodle Buzz of the Visible Planets crew. What's good with you? Man, I'm happy to get to talk to you because anytime you get to talk to a pioneer, you get to learn something. And the books of scripture always say when you meet a man of knowledge, you come to his doorstep ready to learn. So I'm ready to be taught. You ready to do some teaching? Yes, 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 sir. Let's do this. All right, so let's go into the history. Before Diggable Planets, you are a well-known MC around your way, and you're even part of the Dread Poet Society. Tell me about that collective and how hip hop was born in your spirit. Uh, in the early, um, I think late late eighties, I was um, a part of a group of some friends of mine from Philadelphia. We called ourselves the Dread Poet Society. It was myself, my brother J- Jamar Truth, uh, and my man Bun, and um, we formed a little collective called the Dread Poet Society. We put together a few songs and we did a couple of shows here and there. And um, one of the songs that we did together was a song called Skin Treatment. And the song used a sample that ended up being the same sample that we used for uh, Rebirth of Slick, Cool Like That. When I met up with Ishmael at the time, he was developing the idea of the Diggable Planets. He heard the demo and um, he liked the song when he asked me to join Diggable Planets. He asked me if we could use that sample. And, um, and so I asked the rest of the group, they said it was cool. So he took the sample and flipped it and turned it into what uh, everybody knows today as um, Birth of Slick. Philadelphia hip hop is known for hardcore street lyrics. And you come in with very insightful life lyrics. What inspired your view on life and how you deliver your bar? Uh, my parents, you know what I'm saying? I grew up uh, in a single family household, my mom and a sister, and my mother was a teacher, you know what I'm saying? So she was, uh, she made sure that we always had, always had good books in the house, you know what I'm saying? And always kept me in uh, special little programs, you know what I'm saying? To, uh, like, Things like so I was into science and comic books and things like that. So she kept me in programs and, uh, that were involved in science and stuff like that, and book clubs where I could always get different types of books to read. And she always played all the different different types of music around the house, everything from um, uh, Frank Sinatra to like Earth Wind and Fire. You know what I'm saying? So we had a lot of different inspirations and different types of music playing around the house. 
and uh, that definitely helped inspire me to like just my for my love of music and, and love of reading. Yeah, when I was in high school, we used to get summer reading lists. And shout out to my people. Uh, we, we, some of us read the book, some of us didn't. But the, the books that we did read, a lot of those books that we were given helped broaden our horizons, but not only vocabulary, but perspective of life. I want to ask you this question. Is the written word, the literary book, the hidden, the hidden um, weapon MC has to be more craftier on the microphone? No doubt, it's one of them. It's it's this just a bevy of um tools at your at your disposal that you can use. You know what I'm saying? But definitely, reading books is one of the most important um tools of just any person in society. You know what I'm saying? To further themselves. You know what I'm saying? But as an MC, the mastery of English, the English language. You know what I'm saying? Or language, whatever language it is that you speak. You know what I'm saying? Reading books is going to definitely um enhance that and give it some substance. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? When you when you know things, you got a, refer- a, a base of reference to, to base what you're, you're talking about, you know what I'm saying, on some real historical references, you know what I'm saying? And the only way you can do that is through either reading or through experience or uh, having elders teaching you and telling you stories about what, what happened in, um, through our history, you know what I'm saying? So it's a definite important tool for uh, people, especially if you're an MC, to read mad books, you know what I'm saying, as many books as you can. Google, you know, so we have the internet. You can Google a lot of information nowadays. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I come from a generation where books was just so important. You know what I'm saying? I, I like the feel of a book in my hand. Yeah, me too. Definitely. Uh, I want to ask you this question. There are four types of learners. As they get older, they form into two types of expressionists. You have the mathematician and you have the literary, literary child. Which one were you? Uh, uh, I guess a little bit of both. I mean, I was I was into science, so I was into the mathematician side of it, but I was also into literary because I think both of them, uh, a little bit of both is what makes you a, a complete, you know what I'm saying? It gives you a complete view of life in, a, in terms of knowing, you know what I'm saying, your, your mind and learning different things, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we all have different things that we specialize in. But um, for me personally, I was a little bit of both, you know what I'm saying, mathematical and literary. That means you were a balance shot. So I guess. I guess. Well, I couldn't make up my mind, one of the two. No, nah, it means you're a balance because then that means that when you studied something, you wanted to know how it worked rather than why it worked. Am I correct? Exactly, exactly. And, and see, when you rhyme and then you're – Rhyme schemes, you're detailed. You're not just a person who's speaking the lyric. You're actually getting intricate with the words so that the listener can not only hear what you're saying, but they come away with some depth of your, what you're talking about. No doubt. That's been present since the first time we heard you as a nation on, on um, Cool Like That record. My question to you is, why is it important to walk away with something whenever you listen to something instead of not in your head to it? Um, it depends. I mean, I think some songs you listen to and you just listen strictly for um, head nodding ability. You know what I'm saying? You just want to get inspired to get yourself hyped about something. Sometimes you listen to, to music to inspire you, to teach you something about something. You know what I'm saying? Um or you want to learn something new, you know what I'm saying? I got this certain MC that you know, you know what I'm saying? Like wise, intelligent, or you know what I'm saying? Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, you know what I'm saying? There's certain MCs, Chuck D, Public Enemy, that you listen for specifically. You know you're going to hear something, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you can learn something from every MC, you know what I'm saying? Depending on whatever um, school of thought they come from, you know what I'm saying? But. I, <laughs> Go ahead. What you want to say? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm talking to the man who says he treats social media anti-social. <laughs> so, if you think about the perspective on what the MC is giving the message to the listener, you're painting a picture for them to understand your story. What is the most important part of the MC story whenever they want to learn? The most important part of the story is whatever you want 
whatever the whatever idea you're trying to convey. I mean, everybody's different. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I can't speak on anybody else but myself. You know what I'm saying? In terms of me, I mean, every song I, I approach, I approach it differently. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I just want it to be a party song. Sometimes I might be a song that I want to t- touch on a certain current current um subject that's going on and um that's that's really relatable to what's going on nowadays. Sometimes I might want to bring about talk about stuff historical stuff and hip hop that things that I don't that I'm, I know about that I've experienced that might help some other MCs growing up, you know what I'm saying? Um because a lot of times we lose um uh, perspective because we don't get all we don't get full history, you know what I'm saying? We just you you uh you only hear certain things, so I try my best to just try to uh, speak on things that I know about. You know what I'm saying? And, and hopefully somebody will find some some jewel within that. You know what I'm saying? That will touch them in a way that will give them a new perspective on life. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know what the every MC is different. I mean, I don't know what um, I can't really speak on a specific thing that I would say. This is the most important for MC. Oh, every right. MC's journey, oh, he did. musical journey, is different. Yeah, everything. What are you trying to take? Yeah, yeah, I understand that. And I mean, that's what I want you to focus on is yourself because you are a member of the nation that dies on earth, correct? No doubt. Okay, so knowledge itself was one of the first lessons that helped elevate the inner city youth into knowing not only do they count, but they're also part of the entire world, not just their block and corner, right? No doubt. How Are you familiar with my um my brand at all? No. Okay, so I did a show. I have a talk show called The Mike Council, where we talked mm-hmm. to people from the gentlemen. There was no ladies, unfortunately, but we talked to gentlemen from the Nation of Gods of Earth, uh, the 5% Nation of And we asked them about the lessons and how the 5 percenters were intricate in the building of hip-hop worldwide at one time. And now the lessons don't seem to be even talked about or – there's not a lot of MCs that follow that banner that preach those lessons in the, in the lyrics like it was before. I want to ask you after knowledge yourself that you learned. Now, what lesson do you think hip hop should learn from it and put it into itself now? Uh, what lesson? What lesson does should hip hop take out of what? What was the most important lesson you learned after knowledge yourself? And what lesson do you think hip hop should take into itself today? Doing for self, do for self, not relying on other people like major labels and things like that. We don't need. We don't, saying that, that that's what you want to do. That's cool, but nowadays with technology and things like that, you don't really need to. You know what I'm saying? It's about knowledge yourself, doing for self. You know what I'm saying? Self reliance. I think it's one of the key things that we got to start. You know what I'm saying? There was key players back in the day, like Too Short, Schooly D. You know what I'm saying? Other cats who were self, self. You know what I'm saying? They were self reliant. They were independent. They they sold their records out of their trunk. You know what I'm saying? They did everything they sell. They produced their own music. They keep control. They have to control the whole narrative. I think we got to start controlling our own narrative. You know what I'm saying? And, and like and, and what you were saying earlier about knowledge yourself. Yeah, I, a lot I of kids in, in the game nowadays have knowledge yourself. A lot of cats choose to speak about money, things like that, because they want they choose to. Uh, they think that's what the crowd, the crowd of rap listeners and rap fans want to hear nowadays. You know what I'm saying? They want to hear. Everybody seems to be all interested in um, what celebrities are doing and what rich people are doing so they try most rappers out there are just talking about what they what they think the fans want you know what i'm saying some rappers you know what I'm saying, uh, outside of that mainstream bubble and want to try to do things that represent you know what i'm saying about self mind about knowledge of self your knowledge of self don't always have to be the strict book book knowledge you know what i'm saying things in a, in a certain way that is sort of like a subliminal message you know what i'm saying but because you said it. In, you said it in such a cool way. You know what I'm saying? People don't even know they're getting uh, gems are being dropped on them. You know what I'm saying? Because you said it in such a cool, mm-hmm. smooth way that, with the rhythm, and you know what I'm saying? And and, and with such ghetto slang that we, we that we utilize. You know what I'm saying? With different phonics and different terms. Like like five percenters were so interesting because back in the days, a lot of the rappers were inspired by us. You know what I'm saying? By the by the way we talked. 
how we presented ourselves. We always say, peace, God, peace. And that's how peace became one of the most prominent readings uh, in hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? Because, because of the five percent nation. You know what I'm saying? That was one of the major, due to knowledge. You know what I'm saying? There's a song I do. A lot of people say that nowadays. It was always a big 5% saying. You know what I'm saying? Due to knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Knowledge is look, to look, listen, learn, observe, and respect. You know what I'm saying? To gain information. You know what I'm saying? So due to knowledge is... Basically, <laughs> listen when I'm listening up. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Speak to me. What happened in the Audi so stays in the Audi. The five percent nation of Audi itself has always been part of the hip hop foundation and part of our vernacular. You know what I'm saying? It inspired a lot of, you know what I'm saying? A lot of rappers to get into that reason because of other gods. You know what I'm saying? Like Rakim, Wu Tang Clan, and people like that. You know what I'm saying? True indeed. True indeed. But see, even knowledge yourself means respect of yourself and not to be afraid to be yourself. And I think that's what hip-hop has in it today, is that people still have respect for themselves. And listening to some of your um catalog, you must have been a person who was into creativity because you have Battle of the Planets, G-Force, and intros <laughs> of albums and stuff, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you uh, that's true. Uh, that's, a, that's, a classic, that's a classic cartoon right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my brother grew up off of that. He used to share it with me. And and the thing about being a superhero is the influence you have to change the world. Is that not what an MC is, a superhero? No doubt, yeah. So as a as an MC yourself, how did the world change because of your influence? What did you give to the world that was missing previously? I think um we brought a sense of um, originality, individual individuality. Um, in a world where people were everybody was trying to do the same thing, we came out and was doing something totally opposite. And I think we helped inspire some kids who felt um, continued like to follow shunned or not taught, fully understood or embraced by the hip hop culture because mm -hmm. they just they didn't fit the they didn't fit the quote unquote mold that people would think of as hip hoppers. You know what I'm saying? So I think we brought uh, a style and a um, and an attitude that was different, you know what I'm saying? But it was still hip hop, still rooted in hip hop. But it was, it was, it was, an, it was a way of for some people to that, that to relate to it that may not have been like straight street cats, you know what I'm saying? But they, they was into books, they was into um, reading about uh, or learning about socialism, you know what I'm saying, and things like that, you know what I'm saying? So they was into what we did, you know what I'm saying? And it, and it opened up like, wow! I, a lot of people come to me and say, man, it was. My f the first time I got into hip hop was because of you guys. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't feel like I was I belonged in hip hop until I heard you guys, and I was like, so that 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 felt really special. You know what I'm saying? I felt like wow. You know what I'm saying? I I, I did something. You know what I'm saying? To help somebody. You know what I'm saying? Because to me, I grew up in an era where it was all about originality. You know what I'm saying? Be yourself. You know what I'm saying? Don't if you're a biter. Biters always get. You know what I'm saying? Biters was never allowed. You know what I'm saying? In hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Nowadays it seems a little bit less. Um, of a thing, you know what I'm saying? You can, I see people biting other people's styles and sounding just like other people, and nobody says anything. Back in the day, you did that, you know what I'm saying? People would come to your show and check you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, no, people still check people, believe me. <laughs> it's just that the industry went mainstream, and the mainstream do takes the money for us, no matter what the community says about it. Because remember, hip-hop now is bigger than our community. And that is something that you brought in because when, when Diggable Planets dropped and y'all brought in the jazz sound, you elevated people's understanding of music because some people never heard a horn before in their lives. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Some people never heard cadences such as that. Y'all had names after um, insects. You know what I'm saying? And that wasn't a typical hip-hop horn, you know? Yeah. What was what was the insect vibe for, um, like? Uh, how why did y'all take those um personalities on? Like I said, um, you know, rap music at the time was all about being bigger than life. Right here, uh, it came out being we wanted to represent um uh, an idea that was bigger than just myself. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was beyond the ego. You know what I'm saying? It's all about all for one, one for all. And within the insect community, it's the, the instinct is to do everything for the good of the hive. You know what I'm saying? Not to have a hive mentality. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All that big, big individual. You know what I'm saying? But, but put, your, put your ego aside and just work for one for all, all for one. And that was the, that was the, um, 
the idea we was trying to per, per, uh, bring up, bring out when, when we was talking about the insect theory, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody was like a bigger than this, bigger than that, and hip hop, you know what I'm saying? And we came out on a, on a imagery that was based out of something that was to people would think there was the most it's insignificant thing in nature, you know what I'm saying? An insect, but insects are very important to the whole the, the whole scale of nature. You know what I'm saying? They're very important to what happens in nature and our environment. You know what I'm saying? And um. But more importantly, it was about one for all, and everybody is doing everything for the good of the hive. You know what I'm saying? Putting all our resources together for that. You know what I mean? So we decided to call ourselves different insect names. And at the time, when we were talking about it, I decided I wanted to call myself a doodle bug because to me, a doodle bug was a, I, it's a, it's an insect, but it's also to me, I was it as a character, it was a character that I knew from a, uh, an old black exploitation film called Cleopatra Jones. Doodle bug was the, Nemesis mm -hmm. of the main character in the movie, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that, that, that's the insect I'm going to be right there. Doodle bug. <laughs> that's dope, that's dope. Uh, so the insect theory actually goes with the 5% theory hand in hand. No doubt. Right? No doubt, in no a no way. In the community, way, yeah. building, knowing your job, no right? No doubt. No doubt. When, 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 when we bridge together those ideas and fortify ourselves, even in a group, the individual creativity starts to spawn that much more. Unfortunately, yeah. Diggable Planet did separate, but you did go on a solo career. How did the group mainstream career prepare you for a solo mainstream career? Um, I guess it, it definitely it hardened my it hardened my resolve in terms of business. Knowing the business, because prior to being a part of Digital Planets, I had no idea what the music business was about. You know what I'm saying? I knew about the music, but I didn't really know about the business side of it until I got involved with Digital Planets. You know what I'm saying? I had, prior to Digital Planets, I had visions, you know what I'm saying, ideas, you know what I'm saying, that were rooted in fantasy based on just sitting around my house watching Rap City and things like that. You know what I'm saying? I, oh, I just want to get on do a video and tour it in it. You know what I'm saying? Once I got into Big Old Planets, I started realizing it was about contracts and marketing and, you know what I'm saying, different little things, little intricacies of the business side of it that I didn't pay attention to as much prior to being with Big Old Planets. But then after the Big Old Planets experience, when I was doing my own solo thing, it helped me in figuring out how to um, navigate that whole independent um industry, you know what I'm saying? I knew I knew that I knew I had a lot more uh, contacts and relationships in terms of touring. I could call up a club, you know what I'm saying? Be like, yo, I'm Doodle Bug from Digital Planets. I'm I got a new band and I'm doing some things and they were more open to the idea of letting me come do a show and paying me a few dollars, you know what I'm saying, to to uh, showcase my new um independent um project. You know what I'm so because of the Digital Planet thing it, it it enabled me to be a better um business person in terms of my independent sound. You know what I'm saying? If I had just come out first independently before I had that success with Big Old Planet, I, I probably would have, I would have probably done, you know, done well, but I would have had to have gone through the bruises that I took with the mainstream um, and major label uh, situation I had with Big Old Planet. It, 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 it enabled me to not take as many hits, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because I had that cover, the, 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 label, the major label, you know what I'm saying? The resources that come with that. You know what I'm saying? So it helped me out a little bit, and it gave me a little uh, heads up. So when I was ready to do my own independent stuff, I was a little nervous, you know what I'm saying? Because to me, I was like, damn, what am I going to do? You know what I'm saying? The group is broken up. Everybody knows me as Doodle Bug, Figable Planets. Now i got to create a new persona. I mean, I've, I've always been seen knowledge. I was seen knowledge before I was even Doodle Bug, you know what I'm saying? But nobody knew me outside of people that knew me. Around still, you know what I'm saying? Music world, people know me as Doodle Bug. So now I this new situation, it was scary, you know what I'm saying, it was very scary, and I had to build, I had to slowly build up a team of people that I trusted, and um, that believed in the vision to help me, um, you know what I'm saying, carry out that, uh, my independent mission, it took a while, man, but finally got a little roll, thing rolling, you know what I'm saying, we, we eventually started um, touring around the uh, country, you know what I'm saying, we got a tour bus, started touring around the country, doing a lot of club little bar dates and little clubs and things like that and selling our merch on the shows to help pay for the gas to pay for the tour you know for the tour bus and things like that so you know what i'm saying that it, it taught me a lot you know what i'm saying it helped me um on my way for my uh solo career facts 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 this is correct on the line
with okay. C knowledge. Do your homework if you don't know about Diggable Planets, because we do over here, and we salute real hip-hop. Let me, um, uh, let me ask you this question. Diggable Planets were an extension of Stephasonic when it came to jazz, and also Master Ace, cause, and Guru, because jazz is very big from those groups ushering in that sound. And the Blue Planet is the continuation of the celebration of the jazz movement. I also hear that eclectic sound in your solo releases because you have an orchestra and you do a lot of funk and blues in your sound. Why did you want to take that form of production when it comes to your um your uh projects? I've always that's always been my uh, uh, uh a love of mine. You know what I'm saying? I love I love the different layers of music. I love live music. I love um the straight hip hop with the DJ and the drum machines and I like to mix them both together, you know what I'm saying? The two different styles of hip hop and, and layer them, you know what I'm saying? Like some songs I like to take um the drum machine, do some do some breaks and stuff like that. And then I like to I like to call a musician friend up and say, Yo, play this bass line, like I'll I'll hum a bass line for him and they'll play the bass line to it or some horns or a guitar, you know what I'm saying? That just I felt like that was I was trying to create my own style of music and I and I dubbed it the cosmic funk. You know what I'm saying? I thought the cosmic, to me, the cosmic funk was just hip hop break beats and stuff like that layered with certain live instrumentation. You know what I'm saying? To give it a little um, some substance. You know what I'm saying? I like that. See, when I listen to the thank you, when I listen to the Cali on um, the Caledonian, right? Yeah. You got songs on there that bend the ear. I've heard DJ Quick on his album says, like, hip-hop is missing a banjo. Me, I say hip-hop is missing music because there's not a lot of music to the beat and the rhythms anymore. Yeah. Um, what do, You have a song that's about getting high, right? Yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the more melodic tunes that you have. I want to ask yeah. you, what is the melody of marijuana, and how did you capture it for that song? Huh, that song, I mean, the music, my main man, Most Beats, out of Fresno, collaborated with me on that track. And um, when I heard the track, I was first thing I was like, yo, man, this right here, just, all I want to do is just smoke an L to this and just vibe out. This joint is just so low-key and laid back and groovy. And then you hear the, the cat, Michael Franks, uh, the sample, uh, the original sample that we used on there was uh, an artist named, a uh, jazz artist named Michael Franks. And mm -hmm. um, that was a song that we sampled from, and just his voice on there, like get high, high. I was like, ooh. I, when I heard it, I don't, even, I didn't even know at first that that's what he was saying, but it, that's what it sounded like he was saying to me. I was, I was like, I want to get high, high. So I just rolled up an L and I just sat down, listened to it. I just kept saying to myself, get high, high, high. And then the next thing I know, that everything just flowed naturally from there. You know what I'm saying? That that song, the music, just to me was just. A, it just resonated with my whole weed head self, you know what I'm saying? You I captured the excellent song. It was an excellent done song. That's one of the songs to me that was one of the strong highlights. You have a lot of songs on there that not only capture the the essence of music, but let you, the MC, vibe to the beat instead of fighting the beat. And a lot of people nowadays don't even vibe to their own beats. They're fighting the beat. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes, like sometimes, you gotta let the, sometimes you gotta let the music. You gotta go with the music. Let the music dictate the flow, dictate the situation. You just go with it. You know what I mean? And um, that's what I try to do. You know what I mean? I have to, the that's music, the vocals, to get, have to work together. You know what I'm saying? In concert. You know what I'm saying? But that's not what you tried to do, bro. That's what you did. You accomplished <laughs> that. Nothing like, like, like when you think of songs like um, let me go to my notes. One second. Foundation and Monkey Jump. Think about that. Uh -huh. Even with the samples of Tarzan and all that, you know, the drums and everything, you still don't fight the beat. It's the marriage of sound and orator skills that most people in hip-hop today don't have because they're trying to either hit a cadence or a tempo, and they're not lecturing and letting the listener hear the message. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's what I liked about the Caledonia. That's also what I liked about the other project that you had before. Like I said, I was listening to... Huh? Come on, Alienated? I, yes, I listened to Alienated, and there was another one as well that I was listening to. Because oh, you have so a I lot of features as well. 
See, one thing right. about when I do interviews, I don't like to go off of the one thing that's out now. I kind of want to do my no, homework like to give you I like respect. That. You did your homework. You did your homework. Yeah. I ain't mad at you. Yeah, I like to do my homework so I can have respect for you. Because if I can't listen to your music, I can't interview you. So if you're happy with the interview, it is my pleasure. But thank you for making the music that made this interview. You know what I'm saying? Uh, thank you, man. Thanks for having me. This platform is, is very important, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I want to ask you a couple more questions before we get out of here. Um, I'm sorry that this interview is going to be cut short because for, I have personal things going on. But I wanted to really talk to you because you were one of my favorite MCs that, and, and a member of a group that I don't believe. Oh, here's the motorcycle going. I'm sorry. But I don't believe Digable Planet gets the respect they should from our community in America, and I know y'all probably did shit overseas because y'all were jazzy and soulful at the same time. My, one of the main questions I wanted to ask you is this. What is the soul? How does hip-hop celebrate the soul? How does hip-hop celebrate the soul? Yep. Um... I mean, we celebrate the soul through incredible music. You know what I'm saying? There's certain artists that help us do that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't even really know how to approach that question. You know what I'm saying? I don't yeah. know what you mean. I honestly don't know what you mean when you say how do we celebrate the soul. Okay, well, let me give you what I believe, and let's piggyback off of each other. I okay. think hip-hop is not music at all. I think mm -hmm. hip-hop is God, period. And this is how we express God in hip hop. I give you two different examples. One, hip hop and music is about harmony. When your body is in harmony, your endocrine system, your respiratory system, your reproductive system, that gives life. So that's harmony. And anytime there's harmony and there's life there, that means more could come from it. When there's no harmony, there's disease or disease, which harms the body and but takes away the harmony of creativity or creation. My next one is when you take a when you take a man and you put him in a forest, you have trees. Trees are the elevation, which is above, and the grass does the same thing as the trees, which is below. Creates oxygen. So when the and above is on the same tempo as the below, you create life. It means perfect balance. When hip hop is hip hop, you have a balance. Music, movement, godliness, you have um, the way you dress, how you treat your fellow man, how you groove together and to create life. When you have that, that's when we get into the spiritual talk of the spirit and the soul. I ask you, how does hip-hop cater or celebrate the soul? I think hip-hop is that voice of the voiceless, you know what I'm saying? It's that, it's that voice, just like you said, of the ghetto youth that are expressing themselves and letting people know that, you know what I'm saying, we're here. You know what I'm saying? We have a voice, too, and we got things that we got to say. We got to, we have things we want to get out let people know about, you know what I'm saying? And that is the soul of the country, you know what I'm saying? Because hip-hop has been like, you know what I'm saying, we, whenever there's something going on in the country, who speaks about it? What 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 type what music what music speaks on it? It's hip hop. You know what I'm saying? It's hip hop. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? No other music really speaks on it. R and B don't speak on it. Rock and roll don't really speak on it. Country music don't really speak on it. It's hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop is the is the voice of the voices. It's always talked about whatever's going on, the new dances, it comes through hip hop mostly. The new what current events, you know what I'm saying? P politics, you know what I'm saying? P we talk about it through hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop music. I, I don't know. I can't think of any other music genre that does that. You know what I mean? Well, that's so, the thing. Hip hop is not a genre. Hip hop is the only quote unquote genre that's alive because everything else has a time. Because hip hop was alive before the hip hop music. I, I do you on that, but hip hop is also a derivative of so many different musics. I mean, hip hop is, is, is a derivative of soul music, rhythm and blues, jazz funk, rock and roll, and all those things is what makes up hip-hop. And the people that create it are people who come from varying, they come from varying, it started off as Africans, you know what I'm saying, and um, Latino descent, you know what I'm saying. But, and these people were people who are uh, disenfranchised from society, you know what I'm saying, so they're screaming for a voice, you know what I'm saying, and 
but they get, but they, their experiences come from so many different places, just like hip hop music did. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop music is a music that's based on so many. I mean, because hip hoppers, we we sample from so many different sounds to create a a one sound that we call hip hop. You know what I'm saying? That that you call is the, is the soul. That you know, what I'm saying? the soul of our people. You know what I'm saying? The soul of our nation. You know what I'm saying? Which is it's become that. You know what I mean? So. I can see what you're saying, you know what I'm saying? I also see that, you know what I'm saying, hip-hop is a, is a mixture of a lot of different things. Like you said, it's, 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 a, it's not a genre, but it's a genre. It's a mixture of all types of genres, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Because if I say hip-hop is God, God cannot be put in a box. Or how do we put our culture in a box? You can't. Because it's God is, God is the all. God is the all in all. It's everything, you know what I'm saying? It's everything. Everything the mind. The mind is... The mind is the almighty power source of the universe, you know what I'm saying? So that's how I look at it. And everything comes from that 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 source, you know what I'm saying? It starts from there, that spark. Exactly. And that's why you are one of my superheroes. Because when you know, I heard me, I got crew, kid, seven in the crescent. That was deeper than I'm a father center. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was like... It was like a statement. Tell the world about the Caledophian and why this is an album they need to have, not should they just want to hear it. This is a new uh, new era in the Doodle Bug sound. Um, I moved out to California from my hometown of Philadelphia uh, a few years ago, and um, I got out here and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with myself, and I met a few musicians out here, some rapper cats that I know, and um, it helped spur the new era which I call the Caledelphia and the era of a brother from Philly and Caledelphia put it together the hybrid Caledelphia is comes to, to uh, Caledelphia you know what I'm saying and this is my new sound 12 new songs you know what I'm saying original songs talking about what I was going through in the last year during this pandemic you know what I'm saying I, I just put it all to music you know what I'm saying I, I put it all to music and I put my heart into it and I, I tried to, I wanted people to get to this music and vibe out, put some headphones on, light an incense, and just spark up a spliff and just listen to the music and vibe out, you know what I'm saying? I think it's a good, feel-good type of vibe, you know what I'm saying? I celebrate you, and I thank you for staying active, because so many uh, people that we respect and look up to stop rhyming, whether it's Buddha industry or maybe they felt people didn't want to hear them, your voice is always welcome, and we're always going to hear it. So thank you for cre continuing to create great music. I salute you. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Thanks for having me, man. Now, before we go, it is traditional heritage hip-hop that we do the rapid-fire questions. I want to ask you three questions, and let's have some fun. Do you mind? That's good? All right, let's go. Okay, so question number one. Being that you are in the game already, I can't ask you certain questions that I ask most of my people because they're up and coming in the game. But since you are there, my first of three questions is this. What's the most meaningful record you made and why? The most meaningful record I made when? In a while? Period. In a while. Oh, period. Uh, most meaningful record I would say would be, um, uh, I would say Like Father, Like Son off my new album. This is I, I a would, good experience track. Yeah. Yes, yeah, song called Like Father Like Son. My man Nimzo produced it and my oldest son Crown is on it. It's very important to me because that song uh yeah, music yeah. in general was to me was a way that um when I was when my son was growing up, I was always on tour and you know what I'm saying, I was doing a lot of stuff musically. So I was away from home a lot and because of music it kept us apart. But then as he got older and he started getting into music himself yeah. The music brought us back together again, and that this song was the first song we did together, a duet, you know what I'm saying? And so this song is extremely important to me because it helped bring my my oldest son and my, myself together, got closer. I mean, we, we talk about music all the time now. He calls me up, asks me questions, and my advice, how to make things happen, do this, you know what I'm saying? We sit down and just throw around different ideas for for songs and music and beats and stuff like that, so... I think that's one of the most important songs I've ever done, you know what I'm saying, because it really brought me closer to my, my eldest son. That's dope, because the song Foundations did that for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's always good to talk about what's important and how to build a nation rather than celebrate self and the nation is lost, you know? No doubt. Yeah, like I told you, man, I listen to your music, man. We go in. 
<laughs> I noticed that. I appreciate it too. That's real. <laughs> Question number two is this: um, the most powerful thing about hip hop not only is how you can inspire, but how you stay inspired. You said that you read books and things like that. What was the most inspirational rhyme you heard that always makes you pick your pin up? Um, uh, most inspirational rhyme. Mm -hmm. Whew, it's a lot of them. A lot of them did that for me. Um, uh, I would say Rakim's In the Ghetto. That that song, when I hear that song, it just it's, it's so deep and so ill. You know what I'm saying? And um, I love that song. It, it always makes me want to rhyme. Um, <laughs> I like. Uh, let me see. What else is another jam that really makes me want to rhyme? Um, most deaths, my my, my Omi. Whenever I hear that, I'm like, oh, yo, yeah. that's right. yeah, that John yeah. always inspires me to be like to get like, yo, I, I want to get. <laughs> I want to do a song like that. You know what I'm saying? I love that. I love that. The whole vibe of that joint. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, that's some of the songs. I mean, there's a, there's a whole lot of songs right now. I just can't think off the top of my head. But those are some of the songs that I can think of that really, when I hear those off the top, that Rakim and the Ghetto and that Most Deaf, My Umi, those songs when I hear them, I always get inspired and, and, and it reminds me why I love hip hop. So, see, I got to ask you an extra question now. <laughs> you just inspired another question. My, um, I was watching what spaceships? That's the name of the video, right? With the cartoons. Well, all my videos is on basically cartoons now. You know, so what's 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 the song called again? Spaceman. Spaceship. Spaceman. Where you running from Donald Trump? He's like a robot chicken or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <the> spaceman. <laughs> okay. So like, yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you. Um, a lot of your videos are just as eclectic as your music. It's a lot of visuals. Um. Yeah. It was that on purpose? Yeah, no doubt. I love. I mean, I I love art. You know what I'm saying? I I I, I heart the arts and I support the arts always. You know what I'm saying? I, I I started off early as a young kid, loving the arts in the form of comic books. You know what I'm saying? I was a comic book head. I still am. And I, I and in fact, to this day, I wrote my own comic book. Me and my, my lawyer and I wrote a comic book together called The Epic of the Heaven and Earth Association. And um, so I love art, man. You know what I'm saying? I love uh, hip-hop, graffiti art. You know what I'm saying? I love comic book art. I love abstract art. You know what I'm saying? So that really um, is important to me. You know what I'm saying? So I try to always um, add some type of art to my to my covers. You know what I'm saying? To my record covers. I like to have that. You know what I'm saying? And it also I like that ties in with a lot of the loves I'm into. You know what I'm saying? Because eventually I'm going to uh, publish this comic book that I've been working on. The pandemic has helped me get more deeper into it. You know what I'm saying? i got more time on my hands now. So I've been able to really start working hard on this comic book. And hopefully sometime at the end of this year, next year, I'll be able to publish my first episode of it. Well, yeah, I want to buy it. I'm, a, I'm an avid collector of what? comic books, and especially comic books of people who look like us. So Milestone hey, Comics, man. that's my favorite. Like, Icon was my favorite superhero at one time. You know, I, I love stuff like that, and I, and I continuously support and there's other MCs that I've met who like to draw, so we don't. I, I believe hip hop is not limited. It can be limitless as long as we allow it. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, no doubt, no doubt. It's definitely limitless. You know what I'm saying? We got so many talents and so many skills. You know what I'm saying? It's not just about beats and rhyme. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop is a lot right. more. It's about dancing. It's about art. You know what I'm saying? It's about people. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's about culture. You know what I'm saying? Tradition. It's a lot of things. Exactly. So, with that understanding. Can you please give everybody your social media so we can follow you and continue to support you? All right, no doubt. If you're on Instagram, hit me up um, at official doodlebug. Also, my group Diggable Planets is on there at Planets Diggable. Um, if you're on Twitter, hit me up at C Knowledge. That's C E E K N O W L E D G E. Or you can hit my band page at official CFO. Or Diggable Planets is on there at Diggable Planets. I'm also on Facebook under C Knowledge, um, and you can find the music if you're interested and then you like anything you, of my other new music or my old music. It's exclusively available on my Bandcamp page, C Knowledge Presents dot Bandcamp dot com. That's C Knowledge Presents dot Bandcamp dot com. You know what I mean? Well, Heritage Hip Hop does not believe in streaming, and we're glad it's on Bandcamp. So what I'm going to say to my audience once again is 
if you like this music or his music after seeing his videos and things, buy the music because there's nothing better than sowing it to the MC. If we didn't live through Donald Trump, we are not, and Texas is going through a power grid scam. I know. Allegedly. That's crazy. All I'm going to say is if we ever lost the internet and there's good music that you love that helps you feel better, if you don't buy that music, you don't have your music. So please purchase the music because that's the way not only do you fortify your mental sanity and your joy of the music that you have, you also fortify the livelihood of the MCs that you respect. You agree? No doubt, no doubt. And if you like the videos, the video, like you were talking about the, the Spaceman video, I'm on YouTube also under Doodlebug TV. So if you're on YouTube, search me as Doodlebug TV, and you can see all the videos that we got so far. You know what I mean? That's right, that's right. Co and Cosmic Soul Orchestra, right? Cosmic Funk Orchestra, CFO. Oh, 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 yeah, okay. I wanted to make sure I got that right because I want to give a <laughs> salute to your people who, who do the music for you too because y'all do a good job. And it's, a, it's not even eclectic. It's soul enriching hip-hop because, once again, you bring the music back to the culture, and I appreciate that. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you. So my last question of the night, and I'm sorry it's the last question because I would love to talk to you for like an hour and a half more. You know what I'm saying? Well, I think we did pretty good tonight, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, we did um, pretty good. We had, some, we had some distractions, but we we got through that shit, you know what I'm saying? But not only that, I wanted to ask you questions that you don't usually get on other own platforms. Yeah, <laughs> and, you you succeeded, and you succeeded in that, too. All right, salute. I appreciate that. So my most important question of the first interview, and I say first because we have an open-door policy on Heritage Hip Hop. You do not need to be in the Billboard Top 100. If you have a new album and you want to ever do an interview or highlight it, just come back on the platform and we'll celebrate it all over again. Because we believe each child, each each album is like a baby. And if every baby's different, you're going to remember the time, the essence of what made that baby special, and we want to do it with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I appreciate that. I, I hear the passion in your voice, and I, and I truly believe you, man. You, you seem very genuine, and um, I would love to come back. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that loves hip-hop like that, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm with you, man. I support you wholeheartedly. Thank you. Thank you so much. So the most important question is this. 500 years from now, when Sea Knowledge and Digable Planets is still getting played, at, and, they, and they push the button, the red button, for your hologram to pop out at the Universal Hip Hop um, Museum coming in the Bronx in 2023, but they're going to put, put this, push this button in 2521, right? And, <laughs> and your music is introduced to another generation of people, children, teachers, educators, Funksters, the Soul Quarian, when they hear your music for the first time 500 years from now, what is the legacy you left behind that made the world better because you made your brand of hip-hop music? I think the legacy of being yourself, being true to yourself, staying true, you know what I'm saying, and um, always trying to forge a new, new path, never being satisfied with what we did the last time, trying to forge a whole new path, you know what I'm saying? We went from reaching new reputation, and then we forged a whole nother path. Blowout Home was like a whole nother world of music, you know what I'm saying, that we did totally different from the world of reaching. And then, you know what I'm saying, we did other things, you know what I'm saying, Butterfly went off and, and created a, some new worlds of music. Ladybug went off and created her own new worlds of music, and I went off and created the universe of the Caledelphian, you know what I'm saying? So I'm hoping that people will, re will recognize that we were true, true pioneers and true advocates of the hip-hop culture, and we brought our own brand of, of hip hop. Tried to be as original as possible because we used to, we want to be one of the people to think when you think of Big Old Planet, you think of a, a unique, specific sound. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of people out there. You you hear their music and it sounds like oh, that, he sounds just like blah 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 blah. Oh, his voice sounds just like uh, we hopefully you know what I'm saying had the, a kind of voice that were unique. You know what I'm saying? And people will, will recognize it. You know what I mean? And um. I want that. I want that's the legacy I want to left behind. You know what I'm saying? That we were true to who we was, and we never ever faltered and failed from that from that uh, journey. And with that being said, Heritage Hip Hop wants to salute C Knowledge and his group, but also you, the listener of this podcast, because hip hop stays alive because we tell our story. And no matter what voice you tell it in, boom bap, um, bebop, or a funk orchestra. Tell your story because your story is what makes life better. The greatest story ever told is the one you live because only you know the plot and only you are in control of the outcome. So let's take control of the narrative and support the people who have supported us by expressing their greatness to us. With no that doubt. being said, 
this is Karev of Heritage Hip Hop with C Knowledge, Doodle Bug of Diggable Planet and founder of that, of that orchestra of Funk and Soul. And we, are we out of here. We say peace and we out. Peace. Heritage Hip Hop. Thanks for having me, y'all. One love. Even under duress, Heritage Hip Hop brings you quality interviews. And though we had some noise in the background, C Knowledge was able to drop some jewels on us about what hip hop is and how he's continuing to take it to the next level. Support this brother by checking out the album The Caledophian and spend some money with this man. Known in the game or brand new to new ears with new sounds. See, knowledge is dope. And make sure you check out The Caledophian. I want to give a shout out to everybody who helps make this possible. First and foremost, you, the listener. Thank you so much for paying attention to Heritage Hip Hop and helping us grow. You can continue to help us grow by buying merch at storefrontier.com forward slash Heritage Hip Hop. You could donate to our cash app, which is dollar sign Heritage Hip Hop. You could rate this and all our podcast episodes with five stars on your podcast platform or leave a comment and like it become members of our website heritagehiphop.com and you can follow us on youtube instagram twitter facebook and on boom you it b-o-o-m-u-i-t-t.com i'd like to give a shout out to our sponsor transparent credit repair the superheroes of the financial literacy and credit repair world by taking 15 seconds to go to heritagehiphop.com and clicking on the link for transparent credit repair you save 20 percent off of all services rendered click on the link and change your financial future by going to heritage hip-hop and filling out the application for transparent credit repair and opening your wallet to more income instead of paying out more debt i'd like to give a shout out to the heat dj shout out to mj for the interview shout out to the fleet djs shout out to fatty's place bq lex diamonds michael bradley and everybody who makes this possible shout out to a squad rebel radio and all our family out there would like to thank everyone for continuing to build with us and join us on this journey of greatness as we're nearing our 100th episode that's right our 100th podcast episode comes very soon and we can't wait to share that experience with you but until then once again thank you for being patient with us during this episode with all the noise in the background as we continue to bring you quality and celebrate hip-hop in its purest form and with that being said this is Karev from heritage hip-hop saying peace and we out